Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to your reading for Pisces season 2020. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is something that I've been wanting to do for a little bit of time um, since the beginning of this year of 2020. And you know, it's something I was talking about doing um, general collective messages for the season that we're entering into. And thus it just felt right with today being the first day of Pisces season, at least as far as Western astrology goes, it felt right to do a collective energy reading for this Pisces season. So Pisces season lasts from the 18th of February through the 20th of March. Okay. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. This is for all signs, right? This is a general collective reading. And um, also keep in mind that even though this is dated or meant to be an energetic check-in for Pisces season of 2020, it is still somewhat timeless. Like if you find yourself watching this reading after Pisces season has already ended and the message is resonating for you then that probably means that whatever this message is bringing forward for you the clarity that this is bringing forward for you um it is uh speaking to something that probably was catalyzed or kicked off during pisces season okay um yeah so this is going to be a little bit different than any of the readings that I've actually done before. And so if you're new to my channel, welcome. It's very nice to meet you. But if you're an OG, um, you know, this is going to be a little bit of a, a change in my readings and how I structure them and how, they, how I perform them. And I'm looking to, you know, maybe continue doing it this way in the future. So because of that, I definitely encourage you guys to let me know how this resonates with you and if you like this format or not yeah so what i'm going to do is i'm going to be pulling some oracle cards first to start and then i'm going to be clarifying with the tarot um, and i'm going to put section this off into two sections so the first section we're just going to talk about general collective energies general messages for the season and then the second half we're going to get into love messages yes now when it comes to the love messages i'm not really looking to go any really deep into anything specific unless it comes through so i'm just going to be pulling general messages and then i'll be channeling from there and if something specific go comes up i will speak to it but um, again keep in mind that this is a general collective reading and this is for all signs yeah excellent so let's get into the beginning of it yeah general messages here for the collective well general and message and love messages yeah okay here we go <laughs> hi spirit please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for pisces season of february 18th through march 20th of 2020. thank you so much spirit all right guys so let's get started so i'm using to pull the general messages right now i'm using one of my favorite new decks it is called the sacred destiny oracle by denise lynn um and this was gifted to the channel by one of the one of our subscribers and i as soon as i opened this deck i absolutely fell in love with it um so yeah let's get a few shuffles here for the collective for the collective for pisces season 2020 february 18th through march 20th i will say i will say that um i was very starkly aware that it was pisces season when i woke up this morning i was just all up in the fields i really everything just feels kind of like soggy <laughs> which isn't necessarily a bad thing you know but it's very very, very waterly lots of emotion Lots of feeling, lots of intuition. So intuition may be really high for you during this period. Um, but I, I like so much so to the point that like I woke up, I, spirit communicates through music with me all the time. And I woke up with <laughs> Born to Make You Happy by Britney Spears in my head. Like, yeah, it's definitely Pisces season. <laughs> all right, guys, I'm gonna give this one more shuffle. And then... We'll see what we've got for us, yeah? So for the collective, what is going on with Pisces season here? 
collective messages, please, Spirit. What's going on for Pisces season? Okay, well, <clears throat> the very first card that came out is truth. Now, keep in mind that we are in, Pi in Pisces season, but also Mercury is, in fact, in retrograde. And is going to be in retrograde for, I want to say, maybe like the first half of Pisces season. So uh, Mercury retrograde started in Pisces, actually on the 16th of February and is going retrograde from Pi through Pisces back into Aquarius and will be start going direct March 9th um, of 2020. <clears throat> but then keep in mind also, we do have like a, a I want to say like a seven day shadow period post the actual retrograde in which we're going to be dealing with the retrograde energies. Okay. But the very first card that has come out for the collective here during this Pisces season is truth. And this absolutely has everything to do with that retrograde. So what I'm picking up on here is there's going to be a lot of truth um, revealed, whether you do it externally, like you, you reveal it to like the general public or your friends or family, or maybe like a loved one or something, or it's like an internal realization. And a lot of this truth that I'm picking up on here has to do with feelings and love and um, emotion. All right. So there may be a situation in which you are really being faced well, well, you're being challenged to face the truth, to face some sort of truth here. Um, I'm hearing to love yourself better, maybe in so that you can love another better, okay? But we'll get into the love messages later on. But I want to see what else, what are some other central themes to this Pisces season for us of February 18th through, wow, through March 20th. Okay, we have relaxation and actually... You will find a card up on the top right of your screen here, um, connecting you to the Mercury and Retrograde live stream that I did. Um, but the next card we have here is Relaxation. And this was a card that actually came out during that reading. So another central theme of Pisces season is absolutely 100% that of self-care, especially with retrograde happening. And I highly recommend that you guys check out that reading if you haven't done so already. There was, it was a really great discussion. It was a live session in which I pulled energies and we talked about it and I answered some questions for you guys. So I highly recommend that you check that out. But especially with um, you know Mercury being in retrograde for the, like the first half of this season, and there are a lot of things, wow, okay. Oh my God, wow. And there are a lot of things that could be coming up to the surface here in, in, in terms of truth, okay, there could be a lot of things that are coming up to the surface or there are a lot of things that are coming back around in your life. Um, and the guidance there for that was to stay in a spirit, in a, in a place, excuse me, ex stay in a, a space of receptivity, okay, um, an openness, open your eyes, open your ears to see and hear as much as you possibly can. You want to stay in a receptive mode and you want to stay in an energy of, um, responding rather than reacting but in order to really respond you're going to need to take some time to allow yourself to process whatever information is coming up for you whatever information is being shared with you or whatever things are resurfacing during this period um, so that you can really gain a true a greater understanding of it you can balance yourself out in within that and ground yourself in that and then you can respond to whatever needs a risk whatever really truly calls for an, a response okay um, and then the another central theme of this at least the, the retrograde period during this first half of Pisces season is shadow work which is another reason why this truth card here really has a lot to do with Pisces season. So what I'm already seeing for the collective right now is um, throughout the throughout the season of Pisces, um, there are going to be a lot of truths, a lot of um, things resurfacing, a lot of changes, okay? And you're going to need to take your time and really relax through it and really work on self-care here in order to make sure that you get through it well. Okay, and in, in as best and a more and as much of a po uh, balanced way that you can, um, because then finally, what we have that's come out here is new beginnings. All right, so there, this is definitely a season in which some new things could be starting. All right, now, granted, keep in mind this is the very last sign of the zodiac. Okay, after Pisces, we're going right back into. Um, we're going straight into Aries season and Aries, you could see Aries as like the, the start, the new beginning, right? So f during this Pisces season, you could be really preparing for a brand new beginning, something that could happen during this season 
potentially or something that could kick off during Aries season or just something that can kick off later on in the year okay and then at the overall energy at the very bottom of the deck you have embracing and this definitely falls in line with the message of truth because there really could be some things that are um opening up for you that are becoming clearer for you that you're starting to understand more or maybe that you're being truthful with yourself about that really could lead to new beginnings should you embrace whatever those truths are okay this is really nice so far you guys I, I'm, I'm really liking this this feels calm it feels peaceful it doesn't feel ridiculously tumultuous I'm gonna, not going to lie, it doesn't feel ridiculously tumultuous. There may be a lot of strong emotions. There may be a strong emotional current, okay? there. You know, you could find yourself a little overwhelmed with, through, with emotion, um, maybe getting caught in the undertow, pulled under and whatnot, or feeling like you're drowning in the emotions. But ultimately, what you really should work, work on focusing on during that period or during this period is just relax. Self-care, Spirit just said, self-care is a central theme of Pisces season because of the truths and the new beginnings that you really could be working towards. Okay. Excellent. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clarify a little bit. Um, I want to get some clarity. We're going to start with truth here. Yeah. And I'm going to go to the golden, to trust the old golden universal tarot for this. I just want to get a little bit of a deeper understanding here. So what is this truth for us spirit? What does... What is this truth bringing us? What can we expect with this truth? What do you want us to know about this truth? What is truth? I'm give this one more shuffle. And then we'll see what we've got, yeah? All right. So what is truth here, spirit? Okay, well, overall, um, first of all, what we have underneath the deck is the seven of wands. There is going to need to be, there's going to be a need to um, hold your boundaries Okay, um, f specifically what I'm getting with this seven of wands that's underneath the deck, there could be some other people coming at you in terms of what these truths are for you that could be trying to sway you, trying to shake, trying to shake you or move you off your path. Um, especially with the new beginnings that could be starting here. Okay, so you're, there really is going to be a need to protect yourself. To def I'm, I'm hearing defend your honor in some way, defend yourself, um, protect this new beginning that could be coming forward for you. It actually really could be a test for some of you in terms of your conviction. How truly committed are you to this truth, to honoring this truth, to, on to embodying this truth? Okay, seven of wands. But now let's look a little deeper. All right. So what can you tell us, Spirit? What do you want us to know about this truth? What is truth here for the collective for Pisces season? Six of Pentacles. Okay. So for some of you, uh, straight up and uh, straight up and down. For some of you, there is an energy of you being truthful and honest with yourself about reciprocity within relationships. Whether your relation, whether your contribution to a relationship is re is balanced and reciprocal, um, whether you're giving too much or giving too little. Okay, there really could that really could be a very hard truth to understand, to come to terms. Wow, to come to terms with. No, oh, wow, that's crazy. And look, I just there was another card that came out with the Six of Pentacles that had fallen face down and it was none other than the two of cups so there you go right there balance and reciprocity within relationships for some of us i'll say us because i mean i'm a part of the collective too but for some of us within this collective this really could be a hard truth that you're finally coming to in terms of whether or not it's worth continuing to pursue a relationship whether or not it's really worth continuing to put more time and effort, maybe even money into it. This could be a business partnership. This could be a creative partnership. This could be business. You could be, you know, in business for yourself um, and working with some partners or trying to find partners to work with. Um, and this really could be a situation in, with, in which uh, you could, okay, so on the business front there, some of you could be coming to terms with some truths about some partnerships you may have had in the past and how they weren't balanced or reciprocal. Um, and maybe that could have been your contribution in the past for someone specifically. I don't know, maybe if this is for one person, maybe this is for a number of you. Keep in mind, guys, that this is, this is a reading for thousands of people. It is a general reading, but I'm picking up specifically um, where in the past you may have had a business partnership or a business relationship with someone and it fell through, but you weren't completely honest with yourself about how much you were truly committing 
to that relationship, to that circumstance, or how much you were truly contributing to it. It might be a situation in which you were, um, you had the upper hand, or maybe you were a leader or a boss, and the situation fell out, fell fell apart because you know you were making all kinds of crazy demands of people and really not giving them the time and the space that they needed to follow through, being more of a dictator than an actual leader. For others of you, that could be a situation in which you were on the receiving end of that. You were working for someone in that situation in which maybe you weren't completely honest with yourself. Um, and maybe, you know, yeah, the situation fell through, fell apart, but you might have allowed yourself to take excessive blame in this when you really were doing everything that you could, but the leadership wasn't ideal. That's entirely possible, okay? But there is definitely truth. Now, on the other side of the situation, there is truth coming forward about how you may want to be more reciprocal in a relationship with someone. You may be starting to realize that, wow, I really do have feelings for someone, um, or I really do value this relationship with someone. Again, whether that's business, friendship, creative, uh, love, romance, this is a general message. We're going to get into the love, re the love um, messages later, but... You really could be very being very honest with yourself about you know whether or not you actually want to give to a relationship, whether you want to actually start in, in investing in a relationship with somebody. Okay, overall energy underneath the deck right now is in fact the three of wands. So there is somewhat of a return on an investment here in some cases for some of you. Some of you may be sitting around waiting for something to come in. So this could kind of take us back to that realization that maybe, you know, you're investing too much in a relationship and not necessarily getting back what you deserve. And so this could be a turning point for that relationship with this three of wands here. I'm kind of picking up or seeing someone standing off on the horizon or standing on, you know, on the shore here, waiting for the return on their investment, waiting for their ships to come in and maybe starting to finally admit to themselves, okay, well, maybe this isn't gonna come in in the place that I've been expecting it to come from or wishing or desiring it that it was gonna come from. So maybe I need to move on or I just heard set the record straight. Okay, I want to get a little bit more on this right now. So what last message do you have for us, Spirit, in terms of truth for this Pisces season? Woo! Okay, I'm going to stop there. We have the Page of Pentacles and we have the Two of Swords with the Knight of Swords. Okay, well, here you go. So the Page of Pentacles is actually, and so now what we're getting into is um, this New Beginnings card as well. So I'm gonna go there next specifically, but what I have here in terms of truth, we have the Page of Pentacles and we have the Two of Swords. So there seems to be some sort of apprehension here in terms of what I'm getting specifically with the Page of Pentacles is making an offer, an offer of commitment, whether this could be in a relationship or a business partnership. But some Someone is on the fence about it. Someone is not necessarily so sure, okay? Whether they want to give to this relationship, whether they want to start something new in a relationship, whether they want to, whether you want to, um, I'm hearing take this to the next level or just embark on something new. And the thing about it is what's holding things up is a lack of communication with this Knight of Swords. I really feel like especially since we're talking about truth here, I really feel like there could be some really important conversations that either need to be had during this period or are going to be had during this period. And that I'm hearing could con could be an, oh, wow, could be an energy of consummating a marriage. That's what I just heard. Obviously, consummating a marriage is like getting down and, you know, bumping uglies. <laughs> God, Eric, don't be so crass. But anyway, you know what I'm, you know what I mean? But like, uh, in terms of that, spirit is kind of speaking symbolically in terms of um, letting it be known, communicating what your feelings are, communicating what your t intentions are. And with that, the Ten of Swords has just come out. So there really could be, it could be necessary. I do feel like it is necessary, but there, but other than that, there is an energy of, wow, there is an energy of um, desiring to communicate about someone's feelings. The King of Cups just came out, okay? So there really could be some truth that's coming forward here for some of you in terms of how you feel about someone or how someone feels about you and in terms of like the the symbolic symbolic the uh, symbology uh, symbolism excuse me of like consummating a marriage you could be commencing maybe that's it commencing a, a relationship starting a starting over for some of you starting a relationship the new beginning in terms of that relationship by someone really truly confessing how they feel and to be quite honest, Pisces season is like an ideal season for that. 
especially with retrograde okay because with the retrograde being going until the 9th of march this really either could bring a situation in which someone returns into your life or a circumstance or situation returns into your life and communication about that can be had and thus you can start all over or that could lead the way or clear i'm sorry clear the way for you to really move on to the next phase in your life to the i want to say the next best thing okay so now let's look into new beginnings yes one last shuffle so what does pisces season bring for us in terms of these new beginnings spirit what do you want to tell us about this new beginning here any guidance that you have for i really feel like we what we need to be talking about is guidance here wow none other than the eight of freaking cups y'all so yeah definitely okay so ooh, ciao the wheel of fortune is right underneath the deck there so in terms of new beginnings here there is definitely a need to walk away from something to leave something behind um to change um to change the landscape to change the focus okay uh, someone is going to be walking away from something leaving something behind now this could be to be quite honest this could be problems and and um circumstances in the past that may have kept two people from coming together or kept the situation from getting off the ground something like that um but it, i mean this is really an energy of walking away from the past in order to walk towards the new to change the, the the cycle to change the destiny to change the karma it could very well be an energy of someone walking away from something and moving towards their destiny okay what else can you tell us spirit about new beginnings oh look at that look at that <laughs> the page of pentacles has come back out here all right but it's also come out with the king of swords and the five of cups now in terms of divine counterparts or ooh, this card too whoa okay in terms of divine counterparts or twin flames um if you resonate with that and if you don't resonate with that then don't worry then this probably this part of the message probably isn't for you um but it could resonate with the masculine energy within you because we all have masculine and feminine energies within but in terms of divine counterparts or twin flames the divine masculine which would be represent oops which would be represented by the king of swords here um or this could just be masculine energy the divine masculine has been in an energy of regret and remorse dealing with the past especially with none other than their twin flame or the divine feminine here with the empress which is at the bottom of the deck okay but there is an energy for the masculine we'll talk about this with the end for, with for the masculines um you have been really working on or are beginning maybe to work on clearing away the old with this three of cups energy the three the, uh, the clearing away the old and all the toxic stuff that has spilled out in terms of you know making space for the new with the two of cups i do want to advise you guys and remind you that with the five of cups here definitely is an energy of remembering or keeping in mind that all is not lost so if you are on a twin flame journey if you do have a divine counterpart or just a soulmate um which would be represented by this empress energy here okay um if you do have a, a soulmate or a divine counterpart in which in the past things were really shitty you know you had there was a lot of toxicity there was a lot of old baggage that got in the way um i really feel like masculines even the feminine could take from this too but i really feel like masculine you either really need to be embodying this king of swords energy which is talking about seeing things as they truly are um and cutting away anything superfluous and know that anything that no longer serves you so that you can in fact move towards this two of cups energy which in fact did come out with the truth card okay um yeah balanced mentally and emotionally seeing things as they truly are and then another card came out and it was the chariot all right so i really do see over this period uh, um of pisces season especially the retrograde i really feel like the the mercury uh rec retrograde during this time um which is moving from pisces into aquarius which is right here represented by the king of swords here um i really feel like this is a time of clearing away this the the gook the the shit the gunk all the crap that stood in the way in the past so that the individuals can move forward here with the chariot now if you don't resonate with a twin flame situation or you're not resonating on this part of the reading 
in terms of love, then this absolutely has everything to do with a new business venture that you may be starting or a new life that you may be trying to create for yourself with this page of pentacles energy. Ultimately, you're going to be um, walking away or cutting away anything that walking away from or cutting away anything that stands in your way or anything that is no longer serving you um no longer I, i'm getting also specifically with this eight of cups here i'm getting an energy of maybe trying something over and over again or trying a specific method or trying to or working towards something that just never quite came to fruition never quite made it to that ten of cups that complete energy and so now it's time this is a time for you to say to look at yourself or look at the situation objectively and be like okay well maybe there is a maybe there's something else i could be pursuing here maybe i should just l cut my losses and let this go and start over start something new with the page of pentacles here and i really feel like if that is you you're really getting yourself in the mode with the chariot of moving forward whatever could be starting new with this new beginning here for you um chances are it could really take off it could really soar especially since you have this empress energy here supporting you the empress representing um the divine feminine yes but it also represents abundance fertility birth growth nurturance all that good stuff um there is definitely a need and, and, and it, especially when it comes to truth here there is a need to be completely 100 percent and starkly brutally honest with yourself about something king of swords and just walk away from something that no longer serves you or no, no longer works for you all right definitely go through your grieving process with this five of cups but also understand that all is not lost here all right guys definitely all is not lost you still have two cups standing and quite frankly quite frankly those two cups that are still standing here could very well be the two cups that are you are needed to complete your ten with the eight of cups right but in order to get those two cups or in order to find those two cups, there are some things you're going to need to cut away. King of Swords and the three cups here that have spilled out. Yes? Well, that sure is exciting. And then the overall energy from the uh, Sacred Destiny Oracle is embracing uh, new beginnings, embracing, I mean, embrace this, okay? Remember to relax, remember to work on your self-care, but ultimately, yeah, just relax through that. I mean, through all of this. I mean, yeah, the chariot energy is a pretty, it's a pretty fast moving energy, all right? But um, I don't really feel like that's anything that's really gonna kick off just yet. You might be getting yourself in the mode to embody that chariot energy, to really, you know, launch something, get something off the ground, really move forward, excited in, in, in an excited and passionate and and strong and fast way. All right, but I, I it is advised during Pisces season to just relax, ease into all this, flow with it. Yes, go with the flow, ride the current, surf the wave. You know what I mean? Like just just go with it. Take it one day at a time there is absolutely no rush there is no need to rush anything yes all right kids so those were your general messages now what i want to do is i want to get a look into some collective love messages here well the tarot is starting us right off real quick we have the seven of cups um okay so a central theme especially with what came out during oh you know what i shouldn't have put those away but that's all right i'll remember them what with what came out with truth here um there could be some of you some individuals out there okay wow this is interesting so there could be some individuals out there keep in mind that we are now making the transition into love messages yes but there could be some of you some individuals out there that have a number of partners or a number of options they could that you you really could be looking for like the right one but there let's say there are multiple candidates um yeah and so now we have the counterpart to the king of cups that came out in the beginning of the reading when we were talking talking about truth we have the queen of cups now with the wheel of fortune underneath the deck is the page of cups so a prediction that i do i am going to go ahead and feel comfortable enough making is that for whomever is in this feminine energy right here okay if we're talking about divine counterparts soulmates whatnot whatever it really doesn't matter we're talking about love and this is general all right so whether you're on a twin flame journey or not it doesn't matter this message is for everybody but whomever here has been embodying more of the feminine energy and keep in mind this has nothing to do with gender this is this is energy and all of us have both masculine and feminine energies within us although 
we all resonate uh, or are more dominant in the expression of those energies between masculine and feminine um, than others. Okay, so we all have a dominance, but we all have both the energies within. Whomever has been either really embodying the feminine energy or whomever has been really working on integrating their own inner feminine energy, I feel like there is absolutely, you know, something is in the works here between the seven of cups that came out and the wheel of fortune that's here now. Something is in the works. And I do feel like you are patiently waiting for something to happen. You are patiently waiting for some sort of offer of love to come through. Okay, the best advice that I have for you here is to remain detached for, to, from a certain individual, a certain uh, circumstance, a certain way of ha things manifesting, a certain time frame for things to manifest. And instead, just remain in your receptive energy, remain in your unconditionally loving energy, remain in your emotionally open energy. Okay, I do want to say remain somewhat emotionally. Um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, vulnerable, uh, but protect yourself. The other thing about the Queen of Cups is that, yes, she's very psychic, she's very empathic, she's very intuitive, she's very loving and unconditionally loving, but she tends to, when she's negatively aspected, she tends to lack boundaries. Like, she, like, <laughs> homegirl has got shit for boundaries <laughs> if she's not in a good place, right? So, or if she's not emotionally balanced and emotionally aware. So the advice there is to remain emotionally aware, remain emotionally uh, available, remain emotionally vulnerable, but only allow yourself to be emotionally vulnerable to someone that is willing to be nurturing and caring and loving and tender and protective of that vulnerability. Don't allow yourself to be vulnerable, vulnerable towards someone that's just looking to take advantage of you. The Queen of Cups has the has the unfortunate reality of of attracting narcissists to him or her because of their emotional availability. Okay, because she's easy when she's not in her you know when she's not holding her boundaries, she's easy to manipulate. Okay, she because but that's just because she's so loving and so caring. Um, yeah. So remain in your receptive energies. Don't close off completely, but also that's the thing about it with like, you know, waiting for the right person to come forward, you know, and I will say, allow this person to really show you, to really prove to you. I mean, don't be a hard ass about it. Don't be like a cold hearted bitch about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't have to, you don't have to put them through the ringer, you know, in trying to prove themselves that, you know, they're not going to take advantage of you, but at the same time, be discerning. All right. I just heard allow yourself to be free. So also that could really be allowing yourself to love freely. Okay. All right, kids. So let's get into your official Oracle messages um, for love right now. We're going to start with that. And I'm getting that from the whispers of love Oracle. Yeah. So what are the love messages for the, oops, let's try that one more time. What are the love messages for the collective for this Pisces season, yeah. One last shuffle. Okay. Love messages, please, spirit. For Pisces season, for the collective, what messages in love do we have for you guys right now? For us even, because like I said, I am a part of the collective. Even though I'm a reader and I'm, I'm, I'm doing all this for you, I'm doing it for us. So I might as well include myself in the collective, right? Why not? <laughs> All right, here we go. Love messages, please, spirit, for the collective, for Pisces season. Okay, well, the first card we have is physical touch is important. For some of us, nothing is more important than a tender touch. This might include a pat on the back or giving a hug to someone who needs it. And it is, in fact, card number 47, which does, in fact, boil down to an 11. Okay, let's see what else we can get. Okay, well, for, and also, like, like attracts like is on the bottom of the deck here. If you're longing for more love in your life, you need to be more loving. And so when, with the Queen of Cups that came out for this part of the message, um, what you are doing by staying in alignment with, with who you truly are and being in that receptive, unconditionally loving energy, you know, if you are the, if you are embodying more of the feminine here, you are going to attract, sorry, my nose is starting to itch. You are going to attract someone that is equally as loving or can reciprocate that for you. Okay. But with the wheel of fortune that came out with that, you know, it's, I'm hearing it's a matter of time. It's almost like a game of, of universal roulette, right? Where we're 
just waiting for it to stop at the right time. The thing about it is when the universe, when you're playing roulette with the universe, it's not a complete random thing where you stop. Where you stop or where you receive whatever you receive is a direct in a direct alignment with your vibration. Okay, so the, the here with that is like you what the, the message there is you really only want to remain cognizant of what it is you truly want all right don't be thinking about things that you don't want here don't be don't be focused on your fears or focused on the illusions focus on what you do want remain in that unconditionally loving space remain in that feel good emotional space and allow yourself to just revel in that okay and that's going to bring what it is you truly want to you wow okay so we have more messages here we have three more messages First, we'll start with number card number seven. The only thing that is real is love. Shift your focus from the problem back to what? Back to love. Yes. Yeah, so shift your focus from the problem back to love. Now, that is a sp pretty specific message I'm getting, especially in terms of the truth card that came out um, and with the message of Mercury in retrograde. For a lot of us, or maybe even whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to try and quantify it, but for some people out there, this Mercury retrograde is a time period for you to really clear the air, clear and wash away all of the, the burdens from the past, like with that Five of Cups energy that came out, and really create a space for something new, okay, for something new to grow between the two of you, for a new cycle to begin between the two of you, um, or... In other words, in other cases, for some of you, this is an this is a time period. Whatever can resurface during the retrograde of this period, the Mercury retrograde of this period, you will be given a chance or an opportunity to clear that away completely, so that you have the space, the energetic space for something better to come in, i.e., the next best thing, which is something that came up in the beginning of the reading. Okay. The um, with that said, at the bottom of the deck, now this is in relation to the only thing that is real is love. At the bottom of the deck, you do have take a chance on love, which is like an overall theme of this period. When we start to love, our loves are, ch I'm sorry, our lives are changed forever. Okay. And that is a card number 23, which boils down to a five. So there really could be a significant change in a relationship status um, for those, for, for some of us here during this, this Pisces season. And now what I'm getting specifically is uh, the retrograde could potentially bring problems in your relationship to the surface that need ironing out. And it can go, obviously it can go one of two, well, it could go one of three ways. It could, you could completely ignore it and keep going down the path that you're on now, which is not ideal, or you could face it, all right? And that's where, that's where the path forks. You face whatever is coming up and you either stay together or you don't. It's up to you. But really what matters here is focusing on love because love is really the only thing that is real here. So if you're in a, a long-term or committed relationship that is not going the right way, or is not ideal for you, or there is a lot that's going on here, but you're not necessarily sure whether or not you should leave the relationship or not, focus on love. Is there still love in the relationship? Yes or no? If yes, okay, from that point, then say, all right, what can we do to salvage this, salvage this relationship? If there is no love in the relationship anymore, then it's time to embrace a new beginning. Boop. That came out in the beginning of the reading, guys. All right. So then we have two more cards here. We have card number one. Listen with your heart. You are listening to what is being said to you, but need to listen with a loving heart. And that absolutely falls right in line with the Mercury and retrograde messages that were coming through. Again, I highly encourage you guys to check out that live stream if you haven't done so already. Um, there's a link in the description box or there was a card in the beginning, and I'll also link it in the, uh, in the end screen of this reading. But... Um, Listen with your heart. Be receptive. Don't listen to argue. Don't listen to shut somebody down. Don't listen to just prove yourself right or prove someone else wrong. Listen with intentions of really communicating with somebody. Having a heart-to-heart -heart communication uh, or, or, or a conversation. Um, 
work towards understanding each other and and if you guys can't come to a common ground or you can't see eye to eye then maybe it's time to let this situation circumstance or even relationship go but it's really important during this period to listen with your heart to listen to the truth see what is really going on underneath the surface behind the ego masks that we all wear with that king of swords energy that came out all earlier yeah see something for what it truly is and then finally, uh, we have card number 34, receive with love and appreciation. Receiving something lovingly from others is a way of showing love. So again, this is another message about remaining in that receptive energy during this time, okay? Allow yourself to receive, which is a very hard thing to do a lot of the time. I understand that, but... Okay, I want to get a little bit of clarification here. Ooh, this reading is about 40 minutes long already, but that's okay. Well, we're going to wrap it up here. I want to do a little bit of clarifying, and I want to talk about physical touch is important. So what is this message here? I'm going to clarify this, and then I want to clarify listen with your heart, yeah? Let's see if we can get any other guidance with that. But let's start with card number 47. Physical touch is important. For some of us, nothing is more important than a tender touch. This might include a pat on the back or giving a hug to someone who needs it. Yeah? What do we have here? What can you tell us about this, Spirit? The Two of Wands is in reverse here. That's interesting. Ooh, with the Queen of Wands. Ah, the Five of Pentacles is crossing the Queen of Wands. And then overall energy, we have the Eight of Pentacles. Okay, so what I'm getting with this is um, someone is having a hard time making a decision when it comes to an individual that embodies this Queen of Wands energy. Okay, and there are feelings of inadequacy uh, around it. Like this is literally with the Five of Pentacles crossing the energy of the Queen of Wands here. It feels like there is a barrier, a blockage. And that blockage has to do with putting in the work or putting in the effort. Okay, so I guess what this physical touch is speaking to here is the physicality of your relationship with someone. And I really get a strong feeling from this that someone doesn't feel adequate. Someone doesn't feel worthy of even approaching this Queen of Wands energy, whether this is you or someone else that you're connecting to, whatnot, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and that very well could be elements from the past in your relationship if this is someone that is like resurfacing for you or something like that. In the past, I'm picking up like with the King of Swords and the Five of Cups energy that came out earlier in the reading. There could have been some situations or circumstances between the two of you that were really fucking shitty. Like it was bad news. And it feels like someone has grown into their power here. And so because of that, you know, there is a little bit of an energetic barrier or energetic blockage. It's like with this Five of Pentacles here, I'm, I'm kind of getting the Queen of Wands is sitting in an energy of show me. Show me that you're worth it. Show me that you're worthy. Show me that I'm worth it. Show me that I'm worthy. Like, I know who I am. I know exactly what I want. And I'm not about to sit here and allow, allow myself to have to take any shit from anybody. So if you really want this, if you really want this, you're going to have to show up. And you're going to have to do the work. But see, when it comes to doing the work, there's another thing that's coming through here because then it's like the follow through because the eight of pentacles is an energy of hard work, you know, repetition, but also consistency following through this individual would not be able to create eight identical pentacles if he wasn't consistent in his job, if he wasn't consistent in his craftsmanship, right? Okay, well, someone probably doesn't feel like they'll really be able to sustain. Like, they may be able to run the sprint, but can they run the marathon? And even though this is the Queen of Wands here, I don't feel like this is someone that's looking for a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, a one-night stand, whatnot, whatever. Like, no, she's looking for the long term. And again, I'm speaking to energy, not gender, all right? I want to get a little bit more on this here. What can you get, tell us about this, Spirit? What else can you tell us about this? Queen of Wands crossed by the Five of Pentacles with the Two of Wands in reverse. What else can you tell us about this, please, Spirit? Ooh. Oh, shit. Oh, well, damn. 
would you look at that oh my god okay look at this guys overall energy is the king of cups again and the king of swords again okay we have with that the six of pentacles the tower and the ten of pentacles so this i love it when this happens this message is coming around full circle okay there is an energy of reciprocity here there is an energy about getting very clear and this is really directed towards the masculine in terms of the like the masculine counterpart to this queen of wands you don't have to be a twin flame or a divine counterpart or a, a soulmate to resonate with this okay we all have masculine and feminine energies we all have uh, opposites attract all right so okay i'll leave it there but there is an energy here of someone really coming to terms with how reciprocal they have been in a relationship with someone else or you being very honest with yourself about how there's all been a lack of reci reciprocity with someone that you've been associated with but i really feel like this is mostly for the masculine here and uh, thus we have the tower and the ten of pentacles so the ten of pentacles can represent a completion of a life lesson or whatnot whatever and being ready to move on to the next um which really makes sense because we did have that page of pentacles that came out in the beginning of the reading which talks about a new start a new commitment starting uh, getting the ground getting something off the ground but also the thing that I'm getting with the Ten of Pentacles is that whatever this love situation is for you guys, for whomever this is resonating for, it's like your ultimate family life or whatnot, whatever. I mean, like, I'm just getting the ultimate partner, the ultimate marriage, the ultimate commitment, like everything you have always wanted. And with this tower energy, this is this could either be a sudden realization of this, which then leads to reciprocity, a balance between give and take, or something kicking off suddenly, like the relationship changing like on a dime at the drop of a hat or something like that. And moving on to the next level, okay? Because then underneath the deck, you do have the king of cups. Being aware of your emotions, the masculine to that feminine, the queen of cups that came out earlier. Wow. There really could be an admission. It, there could be an admission of love. That doesn't necessarily have to happen in the open. That doesn't have to be something that you share with, you know, this queen of wands or your person, your counterpart or whatever. It could just be the first step in that is you being honest with yourself about your feelings with someone. Okay. Okay. So we're going to wrap this up here. The last thing I want to, I want to clarify, um, here is card number one listen with your heart yeah so let's see what we get with this all right one last shuffle please and then let's see what do you have for us here what guidance do you have in terms of listen i'm so sorry guys my nose is itching and when that i i my nose tends to itch when i'm when i'm channeling for a lot of people so okay here we go what do you what can you tell us about listen with your heart please spirit okay we're gonna stop here we have whoa okay um overall energy is the five of wands and with that, we have the Four Cups, the Moon, and the Tower. And then, oh shit, un damn, underneath the Five of Wands is none other than the Queen of Wands again. Okay, so I'm hearing admission of guilt. Um, yeah. There was an unrequited love situation or maybe a missed opportunity in the past or someone, someone just didn't take up the... The opportunity when they had it in the past and the reason for that though it was not clear it's not what you seem um it, or i'm sorry it's not as it seemed it's not what you thought it was okay four of cups and the moon but then with the tower coming back out there could be a sudden change to that there really could be a realization you guys could be having some sort of um conversation that really brings to really reveals really reveals why something didn't work the way you wanted it to or uh, in the past but you're going to need to listen with your heart here instead of listening to argue instead of if you're in this in this situation and you're like oh my god i can't believe you did that to me like if you love me so much why would you this that and the third why would you act like that why would you do that to me why would you hurt me in this way why would you say that to me blah 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 blah, blah. well there's a reason for it 
There's absolutely a reason for it, and you're about to find out what that is, okay? That doesn't mean that, you know, you still may not disagree, five of wands, but ultimately, that's just petty. Five, I mean, I, that literally, that's just pettiness. That's your ego getting in the way. Listen with your heart. Listen with a com an open mind. Be compassionate. Remain in that Queen of Cups, unconditionally loving energy. Okay, there is a there is always a reason why someone acts the way they do, and quite frankly, it has little to nothing to do with anyone else other than their own selves. So, with this Five of Wands energy, there is really a need to. Put your ego to the side and allow someone to be truthful and honest. Allow someone to reveal to you why something happened the way it did. Let's get a little bit more on this, please, Spirit. Just, uh, just a final closing message here. Because keep... Wow. Aww. Because keep in mind, guys, from the, from the, uh, the Whispers of Love deck, we have overall on energy, we have take a chance on love, all right? So it looks like there's going to be an opportunity for someone to clear the air here. We have none other than the Hermit that has just come out. Um, Virgo energy. Hi, Virgo. But um, with, the, 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 with this card here, the Hermit, there is a realization. There, there is someone has come to terms with certain things. Someone has come to a greater understanding of themselves, or maybe you're getting a greater understanding of your own involvement in the situation or just the situation as a whole. But let me tell you, it was not easy for this person to get there. We have the Nine of Wands. And so if someone is coming forward to you and revealing the tower with the moon, revealing certain hidden aspects to your to their lives or to the connection between the two of you, revealing why certain things happened the way they did, please understand that they're coming to you battered and bruised and super apprehensive. Like if they're bold enough to allow, to open themselves up to you and let you in on what's been going on with them, that is not a time for you to start taking advantage of them and chipping away at them because I will I will promise you especially if this person is a Virgo but I will promise you promise you that that is only going to cause them to close up even harder than they were before and chances are slim that you'll be able to get them to open up to you again so if this happens, give them the opportunity to speak from their heart and listen. Whoops. Listen. Listen from your heart. Okay? Okay, guys. I'm going to keep I'm going to end it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. This reading was a little bit longer than I expected it would be, but it's a collective reading a collective message so i guess that makes sense but i love you guys so much and if you would like to get a personal reading with me please don't hesitate to hit me up all of the information is in the description box below and please also don't hesitate to let me know what you thought of this format um how it resonated with you and you know if you would like me to continue doing it this way yeah much love to you guys i hope you have a great pisces season and i look forward to connecting with you again very very soon yeah take care Mwah. Bye.